Good day. Welcome to another session of Fog Accountancy Tutorials. Today we are going to continue our study on annuities. We are done with the future value of annuities. Now we are going to look at present value of an annuity. Now, we have already understood from the previous video that there are two types of annuities. We have an ordinary annuity and we have an annuity due. Now we have dealt with that with future values. Now under the present values as well, we are going to look at the present value of an annuity, of an ordinary annuity, and then we'll look at the present value of an annuity due. We have already said that an ordinary annuity means that the payment or the cash flows occur at the end of the year. And then an annuity due means that the cash flows occur at the beginning of the year. Now, there is a difference between that. Also bear in mind that in future values, we're compounding. But under present value, we are going to discount. So those discounting factors that we had as 1 plus R raised to the power N in the video for future values, we are going to rather have the inverse of it under the present value, which is going to be 1 over the same discounting factor, just as you know from doing discounting. So we are going to use the discounting approach. But I'm going to first begin with the ordinary annuity. So we are going to look at the present value of an ordinary annuity. I'll give you the formula. We solve a question, and then we look at the annuity deal. Look at the formula and solve a question as well. So we are looking at present value of an ordinary annuity, meaning that the cash flows happen at the end of the year. Now, we already know the normal present value formula before I even look at the annuity. Present value has to do with the future value, which we can also call the payment. Also, the future value over 1 plus R raised to the power N. This future value can be called payment. So you can replace this with PMT. Now, another way to look at this is to say that present value equals to the payment multiplying 1 over 1 plus R raised to the power N, so that the discounting factor will now separate itself. So you see that if it is compounding, then it means that we are multiplying with the inverse of that. But if it is discounting, then it becomes 1 over that. So please take note that this discounting factor can become a compounding factor. And that is what we use for the future values. Now, here we are going to look at the formula for the present value of an ordinary annuity. Remember the way I proved that of the future annuity that you are going to discount each payment or each cash flow year by year to the end. The same way, that is what we are going to do. We are going to do a discounting of each of the cash flows for the number of years. And if the years are 100 years, you cannot contain the stress you go through in doing that. So therefore, there is a general formula that has been established for us. So I'm going to teach you the general formula, and then from there, we'll take a question. So we are looking at the present value of an ordinary annuity. So I'll make it PVA. Previously, it was MVA. So please take note. PVA will be payment or the future value over R. I've told you for the interest rate, you can use the R or the K or what you wish, provided you can define at the end. So please, I didn't mention that in the, ne in the previous video. You can decide to also define your variables. It's very important. So multiplying, now look at it. It is the inverse of the previous formula. So this time it is 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R raised to the power N. Then you close the brackets. This is an inverse of the previous formula. Remember that for the future values, it was 1 plus R raised to the power N minus 1. And then we multiply by the PMT over R or K. R. This was for future value of ordinary annuity. Uh, sorry, yes. Future value of ordinary annuity. Now, you see that this has remained. It hasn't changed. But what has changed is that the discount, the compounding factor is now a discounting factor. So this one has moved forward and this has moved back and become an inverse. So please take note so that you don't confuse the formulas. So this is the general formula for present value of an ordinary annuity. And so just look at the formula carefully and then 
get used to that. When we are done, we'll look at that new GDU. So I'm not going to waste too much time. Let us solve a question on this, and then I'm sure it will enhance our understanding. Remember that the ordinary annuity means that payments will be made at the end of the year. So example, John Benson took up an insurance policy, which promised to pay 4,000 Ghana cities at the end of each year for the next four years. Determine the present value of the policy if the current interest rate is 14%. Now, look at it very well. Let's read it again. John Benson took up an insurance policy which promised to pay 4,000 Ghana cities at the end of each year. So the mention of the end of each year makes it an ordinary annuity. For the next four years, that is a number of years, determine the present value of the policy if the current interest rate is 14%. Okay, so let's solve it together. Solution, write your metrics, your payment or the amount paid every year is 4,000 constant. That makes it an annuity. The rate of interest R in this question or the rate of return is 14% and the number of years is four years. So all these are provided for in the question. Now, we are now finding the present value of the ordinary annuity, and that is payment. I've told you to always go to the formula. Multiplying 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R raised to the power N. So we put in the figures. So now the payment is 4,000 all over the interest rate of 14%, 0 0.14. Multiplying 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 0 0.14 raised to the power of 4 years. So 4, and then we close the bracket. So the present value of the ordinary annuity. Now, I've told you that you can punch all this on your calculator if you can do that. Or better still, you find this and then you multiply by the discounting factor. So let me go that way for you. So here we have 28,571.43 multiplying 0 0.4079, okay? So therefore, the present value of the ordinary annuity is 11,654.43. So this becomes your final answer. So what we are saying is that if Mr. John Benson invests 4,000 each year in an insurance policy for the next four years, he's going to have a future amount that we don't know yet, but we have been able to convert that future amount into today's terms. And that is going to be 11,654.29. So this is how to calculate the present value of an ordinary annuity. Don't be shocked that this is just a present value. If it was a future value we calculated with the same information, would have gotten a bigger, a bigger amount. But in today's terms, this is the amount equivalence. All right. So that is how to calculate the present value of an ordinary annuity. I'm not going to waste your time. I'm going to straight away go to a present value of an annuity due. We'll look at the formula, and then we'll solve a question. Okay. All right. So... We are looking at the present value of an annuity deal, okay? So now, an annuity deal means that the payment or the receipts, the cash flows will occur at the beginning of each year, and that will determine the formula to use. So let's quickly look at the formula. The, this time, we are looking at the present value of AD, annuity deal, okay? Let's see how the formula will change. So it is the payment as usual, over the rate, multiplying 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R raised to the power N. So what have we done? We have repeated the formula for ordinary annuity. Then we multiply by 1 plus R again, just as we did for the future value of the annuity deal. So here, we multiply by 1 plus R again because of the interest bearing uh, capacity of the first year's deposit. 
So this is the formula for annuity deal. The only difference between the formula for annuity deal and the ordinary annuity is the one plus R that comes at the end for both the present and the future values. So please take notes and understand very carefully. And then if it is a future value, this is up and the one is there. So just get the dynamics right. So please, this is a formula for present value of an annuity deal. Now this topic is not very difficult. All you need is to understand the formulas or know which formula is for what. Once you understand the situation, you can always match the right formulas to solve your question. So I'm not going to waste my time. I'm going to solve a question on this as well. John Mark has an investment which is supposed to yield 5,000 at the beginning of each year for the next 10 years. Calculate the present value of the cash flows if the current bank rate is 10%. All right, so yes, very easy. We are told that John Mark has an investment which is supposed to yield 5,000 at the beginning. So the beginning of each year that you will see in the question is what will prompt you that it is an annuity due. But you wait for the requirement to know whether this is a present value annuity due or future value. So as you read, you will notice that it will either tell you at the beginning of the year or at the end of the year. That will give you the first clue that at the beginning of the year means annuity due. At the end of the year means ordinary annuity. Then you don't know whether you're going to be required to calculate future value or present value, but you have at least been able to establish the difference in what type of annuity it is. So down there in the requirement, they will mention whether you have to calculate the future or present. And here it is a present value we have been requested. So you combine those two revelations and you can say that it is the present value of an annuity due because it's the beginning of the year. And the number of years for the next 10 years, calculate the present value. So let's solve this together for John Mark. Let's write the metrics. The payment is 5,000 Ghana cities. The rate is 10% and the number of years is 10 years. So this is what we need. So let's code the formula again. Present value of the annuity due payment over the rate multiplying one minus one over R, one plus R raised to the power N, multiplying one plus R again. So here, putting them into the formula, we have 5,000 Ghana CDs all over the number of the rate, 10%, so 0 0.10, multiplying one minus one over one plus the rate is 10%, so the same 0 0.10, this time raised to the power 10 years. We close it and we open another bracket, 1 plus 0 0.10. You see that once you know the formula, this is a very simple thing to do. So therefore, the present value of the annuity due is, here we have 50,000 multiplying 0 0.6759. Yes. So when we multiply, the final answer for this is 33,797 Ghana cities. And so ladies and gentlemen, if the investment is to yield 5,000 returns at the beginning of each year for 10 years, and the interest rate is 10%, then John Mark is going to have 33,000 797 in today's terms for the investment. So this is in today's terms. We have discounted all those benefits into the today's terms. And that is how we calculate the present value of an annuity deal. I am sure that by, na by now, you've been able to differentiate between an ordinary annuity and an annuity deal. And you will be able to match the formulas for both present value annuity deal and then future value annuity deal. Present value ordinary annuity and future value ordinary annuity. And that is going to be very helpful for you. Okay. Now, let me quickly talk about perpetuities. Now, there is something called perpetuity. Perpetuity. What is perpetuity? A perpetuity is an annuity with an infinite life. As simple as that. An annuity with an infinite life. So when you are supposed to receive a constant 
um, amount of cash flow for an indefinite period of time, we call it a perpetuity. Now, when it has a finite number of years, that is when it is an annuity. So for example, if, like all that we have done, we had some number of years, 10 years, 15 years, even if it is 100 years, it is an annuity. The moment we say it is forever, every year you get an amount of money or you have to pay an amount of money for the rest of your life or forever, then it is called a perpetuity, which is a special kind of an annuity, which is having an infinite life. Okay, now, most of the time you are supposed to calculate present values of perpetuities. And for an amount that you keep paying forever, you don't know the number of years to use. So there is a special formula for calculating perpetuities, or let me say present value of perpetuities. And it is very simple. To calculate the present value of a perpetuity, a present value for a perpetuity, then the formula is the payment, which is the payment you receive or pay every year over the rate of interest. And that is all. There is nothing more to add. If it was annuities, uh, ordinary future values and we would have added a lot of discounting and compounding factors. But once it comes to perpetuity, it says the payment over the rate. And this is the easiest formula you will ever find under time value of money. So let's quickly look at the question of perpetuity. Jose Boateng's father made an endowment fund for him prior to his death. This fund will provide Boateng 8,000 Ghana cities a year forever. Forever. And that is the underlying way. So here, we didn't say at the beginning of the year or at the end of the year. What we say forever. Even if it will come at the end or beginning, once it's forever, it's a perpetuity. If the prevailing interest rate is 20%, what is the present value of this perpetuity? So let's solve this for what? So the payment is 8,000 every year, and the rate is 20%. Number of years, we don't know. It is forever. So let's find the present value of this perpetuity. So it is your 8,000 over the rate of 20%, 0.2. And that's going to give us 40,000 Ghana cities. And that is all. So it means that this is the present value of this 8,000 to be received forever. And that is it. There is no trouble with this. All right. So this will bring us to the end of our video on annuities. Now, we are also going to talk about other aspects of finance, and then we are also going to solve more questions, and then we will touch on any other aspect that is remaining to touch on, on the time value of money. Remember to subscribe to this channel if it is your first time. Share this video. Let others also have a benefit. And until we meet again for another video, it's bye for now. Thank you.